Today on Dr. Phil, they've dated for over three years. I want to see a ring on my finger or goodbye. He says he's not ready. I've been burned. I do not want it to happen again. Will he commit or quit? You need to make up your mind. You going to marry this girl? And a wedding shocker. You found out you married somebody that was still married. With an unbelievable twist. Are you still intimate with him? This is going to be a changing day in your life. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. It matters to you. That's what I want to talk about. Are you ready to move? Let's do it. Show Dr. Phil. So he loves me, he loves me not. He loves me, he loves me not. I don't know if he loves me. Wouldn't it be great if there was a formula to get your man to commit? Now after three years of dating, Josie and Curry are on opposite ends of the spectrum when it comes to marriage. Will he commit or will she have to quit? Now here's what Josie has to say. Curry and I, we've been dating for over three years. I wanted to be married, but he will not pop the question. He won't commit. I tell Curry either commit, quit, or hit the road, Jack, and don't you come back. I do not want to waste five or ten years. My time clock is ticking. He tells me he can't live without me. He loves me a lot. But what, what's the problem? I don't understand what is the problem. I'm going to leave him. I'm not going to put up with this anymore. I'm done. Well, her boyfriend, Curry, claims that his ex-wife is holding him back. Take a look. What's my problem? Why can't I commit? Josie is the whole package. She's a marriage material. She's smoking hot. Come on. I'm sure there's 10 guys waiting behind me right now going to jump at the chance. Reason number one, I've been married and divorced before. I've been burned. I do not want it to happen again. Reason number two, I'm taking on the responsibilities of another person's <laughs> livelihood. A little bit scary to me. <laughs> Reason number three, things are great now, but what happens after we get married and what if things change i've seen it happen before in my last marriage and i want that to happen again <laughs> if something doesn't change soon she's gonna dump me well josie and curry come on out let's see what they have to say hey how you doing good Hi, Dr. josie how are you i'm good how are you have a seat oh Oh. <laughs> so, sounds to me like you're in a lot of trouble. I'm in big trouble. So, and you are fin you're, you're tired of waiting. Right. How long have you been waiting? Uh, over three years. Over three years? Yeah. Okay. Why, why have you done that? Why have you sat around for three years waiting for him to get it in gear? Uh, I thought I'll give him a break, but that's been a long break. The, <laughs> that is a long break, yeah. right? Yeah. So... What is it about her that just doesn't do it for you? Oh, it, <laughs> look, it's, this audience is going to lambaste me. I just know it. But, uh... Hey, they call them as they see them. <laughs> uh, you know, it, it's, it's nothing about her that doesn't do it for me. Believe me. Um, I don't believe you. <laughs> oh, no. No, I mean, seriously. If she was the right one for you, you would think you would do that, right? Yeah, logically yeah. speaking, yeah, I suppose. But you don't. You know she wants to. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think she's a nice person? Oh, absolutely, she's wonderful. Do you think she's a sweetheart? Absolutely. Is, is she kind? Absolutely. Does she do things for you? Yeah. Do, do you love her? Yeah. Do you think she's attractive? Oh, come on. <laughs> She's smoking hot. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so basically, if you marry her, you'd be marrying way over your I'd head. I'd be marrying up. Ab <laughs> absolutely. I'd yeah, I mean, <laughs> um, no, yeah. seriously, I know yeah. that. I mean, people say that to me all the time. I mean, they say, clearly, 
<laughs> they think she's a trophy wife, but we're only three years apart. I mean, you get this is Ab a good deal. It, absolutely, it, and it is. And, and let, let me let me back up a little bit here if I can. But it, you know, well, you've been backing up for three years. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but go ahead. When we met, uh, th things have been great. We have a great time together. She rides on the back of the motorcycle with me. We go hiking. She does all kinds of great stuff together with me. And and. Uh, and <laughs> And it's been great. She's got her place, I got my place. Uh, we, we get together and things are good. But then, you know, the economy hit, I got laid off, and times are tough. And uh, a position opened up in Vegas. Um, and so. So you moved to Vegas, and now you have a long distance so, relationship. So now. And you think that's not going to work? I'm faced with, you know, I, I have a decision I need to make, but the, the issues that I dealt with in my previous marriage. It's, it's just kind of holding me back, and well, you know, I don't know what to do. Well, actually, I'm going to help you with that. But I didn't bring you here today to force this. You don't want to force him into it, no, right? No. If he doesn't want you... He doesn't you, want to, then. You accept that, right? right it's not that he right. doesn't want to, it's that he doesn't want you. Right. That's what, that's what it boils down to, right? I mean, I just call him no, the way I see him. That, no, no, here. No, seriously. That's, seriously. Uh-huh. Here's the deal. You, have, you, have you held back, or have you given him your best? I gave him my best. So you've been all that you can be. Right. And you put your heart into it. Right. You've been passionate about it. Right. You've loved, you've committed. Uh, yes, I love him, I care about him. He means everything to me. Okay, and based on results, uh -huh. that hasn't been good enough. Right. And if he's gonna keep up with this result, um, I'm gonna have to dump him and move on. Yeah, well, okay. Ouch. Now see, you don't like the way Ouch. this you don't like the way this sounds. I understand. I now, we we put a poll up on the website because we put y'all story up on on our website before you ever got here, and we said should Curry marry Josie? You can go to Dr. Phil right now and vote. Should Curry commit or quit? All right. So I want you to vote online. You can go there right now. We're going to get back to that in a minute. Now. You said something that I thought was a very valid question, and, and I'm going to answer it for you. You said, there's no reason why I shouldn't marry her. I just can't decide, and I don't know why. Mm -hmm. Would you like to know why? Yeah, absolutely. I can tell you why, because here's the, here's the, I'm going to tell you that after the break. But here's what it amounts to. She has given you her absolute best. Mm -hmm. And based on results, you've said it's not good enough. Well, I didn't actually say that to her. I mean, I just... I said, based on results, you've said she's not good enough. And that's what you're hearing, right? I mean, right, that's what you get. Because right, right. you put your best out there, and he said, no, not so much. Yeah, Pass. yeah. Right? Doesn't have, Dr. Yeah. Phil, it doesn't have anything to do with her. It, well, it really doesn't. I mean... So don't it, take it, it personal. No, no, what I mean is... that is, what you're saying? What? Don't take it personal that he won't marry you. It, re it, really, it really doesn't have anything to do... I mean... I, it, that's it, what I don't understand. Would you like to understand? Yes. Would you like to understand? Yeah. After the break, I'm going to make it exceedingly <laughs> clear. Tomorrow on Dr. Phil... She's spoiled. Instead of playing with marbles, Chelsea would play with diamonds and rubies. She's a moocher. Did you steal from your grandmother? Yeah. Did you get your brother's credit card and run up $11,000? I did. And she's blaming her family. You keep criticizing them because they're rich. They won't let me do the things I want to do in life. So you steal $50,000 in a BMW? That's tomorrow. I was married for 15 years. It was terrible, really bad marriage, just awful. The intimacy definitely went away. We don't want that again. I don't want to experience going through a divorce again. There's absolutely no similarities from my ex-wife to Josie. The polar opposite. We've never lived together. What if we're not compatible? What if she hates the way I brush my teeth or vice versa or something like that, you know? Okay, where, where are you from? I'm from Lebanon. Lebanon? The Middle East, yes. And you've been here how long? Uh, over 20 years. Over 20 years? Yes. And, and you've known Curry for how long? Uh, over three years. <clears throat> so over three years. And 
You're totally committed. You're in love with him. You want yes. to marry him. Yes, I do. Now, y'all aren't living together because no. you just feel like that's not feel, the right thing to do. Yeah, I feel it's not right to live together. It's just my belief. I know it might work for somebody else, for other people, but it doesn't work for me. I feel he has to be married to me. Right. That's how I feel. Okay. And, um, and so you moved from Seattle to Vegas for your job. Mm -hmm. And um, do you miss her? Absolutely. You, you miss her every day? Yeah, I miss her every day. Yeah. Would you miss her really bad if she rode off into the sunset with somebody that could make a decision? Yeah. Yeah, that would, that would definitely break my heart. I think about, I think about it every day. And, yeah. you know, sometimes I, I sit and I think, come on, let's just, let's just do it. What am I waiting for? What am I waiting for? And then something clicks in the back of my head and I just go, ah, oh, you just, that, that whole stigma of what happened in the past. And I know that that's, that's wrong. She's not like my ex well, at all. Let me tell you what's clicking in the back of your head, because you may not be aware of this. But see, we don't react to what happens in the world. We don't react to what we see. We don't react to who we're with. We react to what we say to ourselves about what we see. Okay, so, you know, you see a picture. You don't react to the picture. You say, I like it or I don't like it. And based on what you say, that's how you react. And you've been married before, mm -hmm. and it didn't work out right. Mm -hmm. And so you have what I call tapes. It's like elevator music that runs in your head mm -hmm. all the time. Yeah, yeah. You have tapes about women. Now, they were actually beliefs just about your ex, but you've actually generalized them to other women. Would you agree? I suppose you're right. Yeah. Well, let's just think about it. All right, I, I brought this out because I'm going to write it down for you because since it's taken you three years to figure this out, I thought that you might need to see this in black and white. I appreciate that. That's, okay, that's, yeah. now I wrote down, you said your ex-wife lied to you, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so if you've generalized that, then you have a tape that says women lie. That's one of your concerns, right? Mm -hmm. She manipulated you, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you have a tape in your head that says women manipulate, right? Mm -hmm. You said that she threatened you all the time. Mm -hmm. So you say women threaten, okay? Mm -hmm. You said she criticized you. Mm -hmm. So you say women are critical, yeah. okay? You said she attacked you verbally, emotionally, right? That she was abusive. Mm -hmm. So you say women are abusive and attack. Okay, you said <laughs> that you were afraid. So you apparently think women are scary. <laughs> okay, now I could go on and on and on. And one of the things you said that really stuck out to me, when all of this was going on, you said you were helpless to change it. So. Here's this guy walking around in the world just saying women lie, women are manipulative, women are threatening, women are critical, women are abusive. And then here comes you. Yes. And so he looks at you with all of this elevator music playing in his head. Not a pretty music. Not a pretty music. <laughs> Not a period of music. It's all about nope. you. I mean, you didn't do any of this, did you? No, no, none. Did she lie to you? No, Manipulate not. you? Never. Threaten you? Criticize you? Attack you? Abuse you? Scare you? No. Make you feel helpless or trapped? She did scare me when I met her, because, I mean, look at her. <laughs> yeah, that ain't what you ought to be scared about. You ought to be scared about that several million people are seeing her on national television right now and getting to know that she is available. Uh, oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're kidding me. And you know the thing that, that gets me the most out of all of this? Mm -hmm. You're happy to be out of your marriage, right? You're happy that yeah. your ex is gone? Yeah, absolutely. She is controlling you and dominating you this very second. She owns you. Yes. She owns you. I never yes. thought of that. I never thought of it that way. Yes. She is coming between you and her right now. 
That's true. Never thought of it that way, but you're right. She owns you. You said she manipulated you before. She's manipulating you right now. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I had all this stuff planned that I was going to say to you when I came out here, and now I'm speechless. Because <laughs> he's right. What am I going to say to that? Well, I don't right. know, dummy. Oh. <laughs> See, this is what I was afraid of. <laughs> I mean, seriously. She owns you. She, you're like a marionette, and she she gets you over there close to her, and she jerks you back. Oh boy! I never thought of it that way before. How am I doing? You are absolutely right. 100 percent. I agree with you. More than 110 percent. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> I just hope you absorb it. I'm taking it in, baby. We'll be right back. Let's check on our poll online. 46% of online voters think Curry should commit, and 54% think they should call it quits. Wow. You know why? Why is that? They're thinking if, if you got to talk him into it, don't bother. Hmm. Don't bother. Right. And you know, I've I, I, I've said it before. Marriage is hard enough. Right. If two people are kicking, fighting, and scratching to get to each other. Right. I mean, if he's willing to climb the mountain, swim the stream, slay the dragon, <laughs> and fight his way to your door, and if you got to track him down like a cheetah on a gazelle, <laughs> um, then I, I guarantee you, women are thinking. If he wants you, he better come get you. Right, right. Is well, what they're saying. Am right. I right? Right. I mean, that's what women are yeah, thinking. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know what? I, I get that. And I, I figured the majority of people w would think that. Uh, but the thing is, is things were, things were great when we were together up in Seattle. And really, honestly, the only thing that tore us apart was the fact that I needed a job. And, and kind of secretly... I was hoping she'd come with me to Vegas, and um, that hasn't happened yet. It's been a month and a half. I just moved there. And it's not going to happen. I'm not going to move <laughs> to Vegas. I am not. I'm gonna, I am not. Here's the thing. You, you just said, so let me, I'm just trying to help you yeah. here, guy to no, guy. I, I, you know, yeah. forget about these I'm, guys. I'm with you. See you. Okay. You said in Seattle everything was great mm -hmm. for you. Yeah. It wasn't great for her. Am I right? Right. You're right. Because she's sitting there thinking, why am I not enough for him? Yeah. Why am I not good enough? But, why? but she is. No, no, she, no. She I'm telling is. you what she's thinking. Yeah. I'm telling you what she's thinking. This is what you're thinking. And she's thinking, I, you know, I didn't do anything to him. I didn't lie to him. I didn't manipulate him. I didn't criticize him. I didn't hurt him. I didn't trap him. All I did was love him. Mm -hmm. Right. And whatever I have to offer, it apparently isn't good enough. And that makes me frustrated. Well, it makes yeah. me mad. It makes me angry sometimes. It's like, why? What did I do to deserve this? I don't deserve this. Yeah. You know? And I don't want to put up with this anymore. I get to a point right now, I'm done. I'm, I'm done. There is plenty of other guys around. Babe. Honestly, baby, you, you need to know that it's, 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 not, it's not you. It doesn't have anything to do with you. Hey, all these guys are <laughs> chiming in. I can hear them right now. But, but seriously, between you and I, it, it's, it's not, it, you are enough for me, mm -hmm. honestly. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, I'm, and I'm taking all this in, honestly. I, the past couple days that we've spent together talking about all this stuff really honestly makes me realize all the things that that I do love about you I know but I want to see a ring on my finger soon or goodbye I am done I'm done I'm just telling you how I feel three and a half years it's it's enough it's and enough you're not getting any younger I'm not <laughs> feel it biological clock ticking yes yes <laughs> that's what she's thinking yes 
That's, the, that's what she's thinking. I'm not saying you're getting old, but that's I'm telling I'm him what you're thinking. That. I am <laughs> thinking that. He, he's right. He's absolutely right. I am thinking that. And I don't want to deal with that anymore. And I don't want to be laying in bed at night thinking about it or thinking when I'm going to see you again. I can't fly and see you to Vegas back and forth. I have a job. And it wastes a lot of money. I can't do that anymore. I can't. You need to make up your mind soon or done. I'm done. So, you're going to let her inspire you? Or are you going to let her control you? I, I think I'm, I think I'm going to take the first part. Yeah. You going to marry this girl? You're, you're trying to get me to do this no, on, on national TV no, here. No, I'm not. I, I am not. I am not. These ro Forget the rose petals. That's not... Uh, there's nothing to do with it. I, I'm not. I, I'm just saying. That's, that's her question. She's, she's saying put up or shut up. Now, you yes. don't have to do it right now. Okay. You have to do it right now. I'm not trying to trap you into something here at all. Okay. But I want you to know that she feels like she has put up enough and it's time for you to match it or walk. Yes. True? Yes, it's true. Or hit the, red, hit the road, Jack, and don't you come back no more. It's <laughs> tough. Uh, yeah, I, I had to get to this point. All right. You need to give this some thought, and I'm going to talk okay. to you before the end of the show. Okay. All right, next, we're going to meet a woman who thought she was having a dream wedding, that she was marrying the love of her life, and she discovered it was all just a big lie. John gave me a fairy tale wedding. It was beautiful. All our friends, our family, it was just perfect. But our marriage was not real. I just can't trust him. The ring, the dress, and madly in love with the man of her dreams. Melissa thought she had the ultimate commitment until she discovered that the entire wedding was fake. Everything about our marriage and relationship had been alive from day one. I met John about two years ago. He swept me off my feet, and we were just all gung-ho about getting married. I went dress shopping. It just went hog wild. John initially told me that he was married twice. Right before the wedding, I found out that he had a third wife, and he's been divorced for about two years. At that point, it was too late emotionally to go back. All I wanted to do was go forward because I was so in love with this guy. John gave me a fairy tale wedding. It was beautiful. The fish pond, the DJ was awesome. The head table was gorgeous. All our friends, our family, it was just perfect. I never saw our marriage certificate. I just had a gut feeling. I asked him for months, can I see it? Can I see it? He's like, no, my sister has it. Finally, I just drove myself into the courthouse. I said, well, can you tell me if I'm married? So they looked up John's name and saw the first marriage, saw the second marriage, saw the third marriage. First two were divorced, the third one still married. I was betrayed by him because our marriage was not real. I waited a long time to fall in love with someone, but it's not real love. He lies all the time. My heart's still connected to him, but the trust part is what separates me giving him my heart. He says he loves me, but if you love someone, you don't do the things that, that he's done. I just can't trust him. Okay, so in August of 09, you have this beautiful wedding, but you, you never saw the marriage certificate. No. He's like, don't worry about it. I'll, I have a friend, you know, who can get our, our paperwork. We'll be fine. And, um, you know, we'll sign it and send it in. I didn't really know legalities of things. So I'm like, cool. You know, I'll do my thing down here. We'll get the paperwork. We'll sign it at the wedding and we'll have it. We'll be good. And his sister married you. Yeah. Okay. So you would ask him about this and he would just get mad when you were leading up to it because it... First, you, you thought he had been married once, then twice, then three times? Yeah. This unfolded across time. He didn't tell yeah. you about three times to begin with? Not until the third one he didn't tell me about until after he snagged me. After he got my heart and I started really liking him and I'm like, you know what? Good people mess up. He's never met someone like me. I'm special. I'm different. 
and mm -hmm. you know maybe this is the time to give him a new start. You found pictures of him with a woman. Yeah. A, a compromising pictures, and and you yeah. said, he said this is just somebody he dated. Mm -hmm. Because I turned, don't remember her name. I don't know who she is. Doesn't remember her name. Found is a it? wedding band, a trinket box with I love you, <laughs> the whole nine yards. I was like... But this know. woman he couldn't remember the name of turned out to be his third wife? Yeah. Of 14 years? Well, they were together. I think I said that wrong, but it was a total of 14 years they were together, but they were married for almost 10. But he couldn't remember her name? Nope. And I know her name. Yeah, so, <laughs> so when you found out that you married somebody that was still married, he wasn't subject to criminal charges because it wasn't a real wedding. Mm -mm. I don't know what he told his sister, but she went online and supposedly she took a test to be able to marry someone. Mm -hmm. But later on down the road, we had dinner and she says, you know, I, I, I knew about you know, things with John and, and the other one, you know, his third wife, and um, I was gonna tell you if he didn't tell you soon, but I don't know at what point she and knew. He told you that he graduated from the University of Alabama? <laughs> yeah. Did he? No. he? no. No, he never went to college. He said he blew his knee out and he lost his scholarship through the rest of Alabama, and he never even went to college. Well, because we talked to the university of Alabama and they gave us a statement. The school was unable to locate either a degree or an enrollment record for the subject of your verification request. So he didn't go there. Has he told you now that he didn't go there? Well, because I unraveled it. Well, you're going to hear what John has to say next. We'll be right back. Monday on an all new Dr. Phil. It's Avery's first birthday. Repeat after me. You can't change what you don't acknowledge. <laughs> Which grandparent? This is good for you. That's my screen. Is the better babysitter. All right, good match. Plus, she's lost over 100 pounds. Think she looks good? <laughs> but hasn't gained enough compliments from her husband. Do yeah, not pause yeah. when I ask you this stuff. <laughs> I am lobbing you softball. <laughs> That's Monday. This is our wedding band that we had picked out together. I went to an appraiser to see how much the ring was worth, and I find out that it's cubic zirconia. It's not even real. He said he paid $900 for it. He said the gold was real and the diamonds on the side were real. I said all you had to do was tell me you couldn't afford it. As long as it was a real ring, I didn't care what size it was, as long as it came from your heart, because it meant something. It was just another lie. Well, the ring wasn't the only fake thing about her wedding. It turns out that Melissa's entire marriage was a sham because he was still married to somebody else. Now, we interviewed John over the phone, uh, and he agreed to be on the show, but then he changed his mind. Several times. Uh, several Back times. Back and forth. In fact, you changed your mind several because times. Because of him manipulating me, that he... it would ruin my life and my <laughs> daughter's life. I said, I have nothing to lose, you do. <laughs> Well, he admits to lying about his divorce, and he also said that I basically lied to Melissa about how many times I was married, the fact that I was still married, and how long I was married. I lied about everything. I kept lying because I was afraid to lose her. If I told her the truth, she wouldn't have stayed with me. I even lied to my sister and told her I had the marriage license when I didn't. I don't even think my sister knew that I wasn't divorced yet. It's not in my personality to lie, but once I lied, I had really? to keep lying to cover it up. <laughs> That's what he He's said. He's only done it for two years. So you don't have anything to do with him now? The only reason I have anything to do with him right now is because financially I can't do it. And that's the only reason. And I have a 13-year-old daughter, and I feel like I'm going to fail her. Um... It's the main reason why I talk to him, because he calls me every day. He doesn't even give me a chance to call him. He doesn't give me a chance to heal. He just is just calling all the time. I miss you. I love you. I'm like, John, you're not giving me a chance. I can't even tell if I miss you or even ever love you again. I don't know. I got a bell going off in my head here. Um, are you still intimate with him? We have been, yes. Even after everything you, you found out. And the main reason for that is because he 
neglected me <coughs> for a long time. And it, it almost felt good to be wanted or hugged or, or caressed, even if there was no emotion involved with him. And I might as well do it with him and not someone else. I'm not like that. I hear you. <laughs> My friends think the same thing. Well, Melissa's best friend and bridesmaid, Roxanne, is here. She says that they shouldn't stay together. So what, what do you think about this? As this started happening and unraveling, I thought, wow, this guy really loves her. Um, and as things kept unfolding and I kept learning more about what John has put Melissa through and how much he contacts her constantly, he manipulates her, I, I've, he's controlling her. I, I think now that she's gone, he's going into this mode, that a panic mode, he doesn't have her to control anymore. So she definitely needs to, to get the distance and, and move on. Have you talked to him since you've been here? How did, how did that come to pass? Um, I'm, I'm a big person on, on telling the truth. And I didn't tell him what I was, I ended up making the decision to come. And um, last night I called him, because I was on the plane already, so he couldn't stop me this time. <laughs> Because it took forever to even get here, trust me. I, we went back and forth, and he kept stopping me. And I finally got on the plane. And I'm like, I have to tell you something. So I told him. And he just went irate. I just can't believe you lied to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I've been real with you. I've given you my heart. I've given you everything I have in my heart and love you so much. And you're going to get on me about lying one time. And I just told you the truth the next day because I can't hold it back anymore. Well, isn't that kind of the pot calling the kettle black? <laughs> yeah. I mean, did, yeah. did you say that to him? You, you, I told him, I say, you're just like ridiculous. Well, if he wanted this situation to work, then wouldn't you think that he would been the first one through the door here and sat down and said, Dr. Phil, I have messed up. I, I want to make this right. Tell me what I need to do. Wouldn't you think he would have leaned into this instead of run away from it? We found out our cat had um, diabetes, severe diabetes, and then he, it just fell right into his lap. We can't go. Because <laughs> your cat was sick. Yeah. And I'm like, John, you know what? I didn't even, I just... Is, is he a veterinarian? No. <laughs> our staff has talked to him, I don't know, dozens of times. times. 40, 50 times. And I'm told that they, he came up with this cat story. They offered to board the cat mm -hmm. for him. They offered to get a veterinarian to, to oversee everything and take mm -hmm. care of the cat in your absence. They, they, they took away every obstacle. And it just seemed like he just thought, you know, I'm not going to come here because Dr. Phil's going to ask me questions I don't have. He didn't want to get thrown under the bus, he said. <clears throat> he didn't want to be humiliated. He didn't want to lose his business. He coaches softball. He didn't want to jeopardize that. I'm like, if you really love me, you would do whatever it took. Well, but you are here, and I hope you're glad you're here. because you. You're, you're, well, <laughs> you're so smart. Like, you see things, and you just by the first set of people. I'm just like, oh. Like, I didn't think it that way. Yeah. You just have a way of like reaching in and pulling out without even trying. <laughs> well, obviously an intelligent woman. <laughs> but, um, oh my but, God. I would very much like to get you some help there at home. Someone that you can sit down without him, not marriage counseling, not couples counseling, but just you and, and if your daughter, if you want at some point, to sit down and get your focus, get your bearings back on your self-esteem, your self-worth, and recognize that this isn't about you. He brought this toxicity to you, and you need to rise above that and decide what you're going to do with your life. And I want to get you some help to do that. This is a very important first step. And I, I hope women that are out there that are seeing morning signs and don't want to see them because they don't want them to be true, take a lesson from what you're saying. You're using your life here, and I think that's a great thing. If you had this to do over again, you wouldn't deny those warning signs. No. I'm proud that you came. I'm proud that you're using your life and telling this story. And I'm proud that you're standing up on your own. And thank you for coming here. Okay? So we're going to get you some help with this. Because I think you need it. Thank you.
Okay, all right, fair enough. All right, I'm going to talk to another couple here in a minute that says the happiest day of their life turned into the worst experience of their life when the wedding planner scammed them out of $30,000. We'll be right back. A woman who served time for pretending to have cancer and scamming people for money to pay medical bills now faces charges for a new scam that targeted engaged couples. Tanya Clark was arrested Friday night, accused of taking nearly $30,000 from another couple, promising them a grand wedding at the Canyons Resort. This is just a nightmare yeah. scenario. So you guys get engaged and you think, we need a wedding planner. Yes. You had forked over $30,000. Yes. It was devastating. This is just unbelievable. So this woman had been in jail for another scam before this. Yes. So she's just a con artist. How, yes. did you, how did she find you or you find her? Well, I went on to a wedding website and requested some information and she contacted me through that and said she only works on references and, and referrals and she provided me with what, four to six references and I contacted them and um, we met with her and she was nice. We led her into our home. I cooked for her. We were friends. And she paid for a lot of the things that she lined up with a stolen credit card? Yes. So that meant those things weren't really paid for. Nothing was paid for. Nothing. So you had to pay for all of that. Again, yes. And then you had to pay extra for what wasn't done. Yes. Think of all the couples that are watching this right now. They're thinking, oh my gosh, references seem legitimate, got burned for 30, ultimately 50,000 bucks. What's the lesson here? What would you do differently? Oh, <laughs> everything. Uh, run to Vegas? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he would. He tried to get me to run, but I'm like, no, I want a wedding. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I waited so long to meet the man of my dreams, and she took the one experience that all women are supposed to have and smashed it, smashed it to pieces. So what I would do differently is not hire her. Yeah. I would not hire her. Um, I would run away as well. I wouldn't do this again. This has got to be putting stress on you guys. Yeah, are you? Has it affected the way you two get along? It's not easy. I mean, the money situation's really tough because we didn't plan on starting our life together being broke and in debt. So that's a little tough. It's one thing to lose the day. It's another thing to lose the money. But if you lose the relationship because the stress gets you and you just start barking at each other just out of frustration, that would be the real tragic loss here. And it's what's called non-directional venting. You know, it's like you're really mad at her. You're really mad at, at things that have nothing to do with the two of you, but because you're handy, you just kind of can take it out on each other. And you got to really guard against doing that. You got to really say, look, we don't have enough money here. I mean, clearly, all of a sudden, we're $50,000 in debt, and our hearts are hurting. We're upset about this, but we just can't take it out on each other. And you got to recognize when that's happening and just say, hey, wait a minute. This is exactly what Dr. Phil talked about. This is exactly what he said. I'm just. I, I haven't got closure on this yet. It's still an open wound, and I'm so upset, and I'm taking it out on you, and I'm sorry. Let's just, let's not do that. Let's just stop this. Let's go walk around the block. Let's go do something different. I mean, you got to label it so you don't do it, because this, too, will pass, and you will have a great story to tell your grandkids. I mean, seriously. <laughs> you have to meet you. <laughs> just, think when you're, just think when your daughters get married or your son's get married. You can say, oh, okay, sit down, because we're going to talk about this. You're going to Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> and we're coming. <laughs> I mean, you, you've, got a, you've got a story to tell, but you don't want to lose the relationship in this, right? Okay, now not only did Nate and Tina pay 30000 to the planner, they had to pay the vendors 20 grand. Uh, obviously, they opted for no honeymoon because they were broke at that point. So I decided that they could use one, and so did the folks at Rancho Valencia Resort and Spa in Rancho Santa Fe, California. So we're going to fly you guys there so you can have that honeymoon that you've been wanting. And it is a spectacular. Look at this place. It is unbelievable.
three days and two nights in the Garden Oasis, spa treatments, breakfast, dinner, everything. We want you to look back on your honeymoon with good thoughts. So at least we can put a little bit of silver lining around this. This is a terrific, terrific place, okay? Thank you. All right, fair enough. We'll be right back. Well, so, Curry, have you been thinking about this? We, have we scared you away with these wedding <laughs> nightmares here? No, I, no, really not. I feel really bad for these folks, man. That's just a terrible deal. Uh, yeah. I commented, I said, man, I'm glad we're not the ones in that position. Yeah. But, um, yeah. <laughs> this is, uh, your turn. No, you, you, you keep looking at me like I'm wanting you to propose to her or something, and actually I'm not. I, what I want you to do is I really want you to go home. I want you to be very, very thoughtful about this. I want you to think about what I said. Take your power back from this woman you were married to and, and do what's right for you and, and what's right for her. And you're at a point that you either need to marry her or you need to respect her enough to tell her. Yeah. And yeah and let her go. So I, th I hope you guys yeah. will be very thoughtful about this. I appreciate that. Take your power back. Don't make her pay for the sins of yeah. one that's gone before yeah. her. Because it's not her fault. Because she it's didn't do it. At all. She didn't do that stuff. All she's doing is, is sitting there loving you. Yeah. And, uh, and so you, you need to be thoughtful about this. And then you need to let us know exactly what y'all are going to do. Yes. All right. Yes, thank you. Now, if you want to know what to do to be safe in planning your wedding or a party, you can go to drphil.com. We're going to have some very important guidelines for you there. And if you are in a commitment crisis, you can go to drphil.com. You can click on Be On The Show. You can tell us your story. We deal with all kinds of issues here. So go there, write us a letter, and you could be right here on stage. Uh, hopefully working things out. I want to thank all of my guests for being here today. Thanks, guys. So long.